Hey, what's going on, beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time today to hang out with me. I really appreciate it. And I am so excited to film today's video because we're talking about EDH updates and I have so many cool things to chat with y'all about. And I kind of want to start this video off by chatting about my most recent project that I have completed. And that is my token deck, Queen Alenal. This deck is super fun. I think where I kind of wanted this deck to go in the direction that I wanted to do was cards like instants and sorceries that generate like two, three, four tokens, something like that. And then having a lot of different types of tokens. I think right now I make about maybe 15 or so different types of tokens, which is really exciting. And it's it's a great time. It's really fun. It's not really about token buffs. It's just about mass swarm of tokens. The other thing with this deck is it kind of has like a little bit of Voltron, a little bit of ways of, because I mean, she's super big because if I have like 10 creatures, I mean, she's a 10, 10. And then I'm just able to swing those tokens and swing her. So I have a couple of ways to like, give her, you know, trample and all that sort of stuff. So I'm having a ton of fun with this deck. I'm so excited to film this deck tech for you guys. My goal and my aim is to get it up in the summer. Um, I feel like I'm somebody who talks a lot about a commander project before I actually film it because um, I don't want to talk about cards that I don't necessarily haven't tested or played with or anything like that. I want to make sure that the deck is really solid and I feel really comfortable with it. And the slots are getting pretty tight, which is really, really exciting. So oh, I love this. This deck is super fun. It's great. I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. So quick little reflection on two commander projects that I have already talked to y'all about. Um, basically, first up, we have Toxrill, and I have other projects that I will talk about in this video. So this one is definitely on the back burner, and it's definitely the deck that I'm prioritizing the least. That's not to say that I won't collect cards for it or things like that. I am hoping to do some trades and things so that I can get a couple of pieces for all of these things. Toxrill just seems so cool. I... Uh, kind of, I, I really like this color combination and I feel like I've tried to do it in the past and it has like as a mill deck with Lazoff and it didn't really work. So I wanted to try something pretty different and I do have a lot of really great staples for this that I think could work really well in this deck. Um, I just think it'd be really fun to do. So that's Talks I don't really have any like solid updates or anything about it, but it's still on the table. I just have all of these other projects are ahead of it. So, which goes into the next project, which is Aragorn the Uniter. Basically, I, after I finalized tokens, this was going to be my next project. And I've been waiting. Koji is actually sending me a version of this card. It, this card, so if y'all have been keeping up with like the way cards are coming out, there will be like one card and there's like four different versions sometimes of like one card. And so he literally had like all of the versions of this card and was like, pick which one you want. And I was like, this is funny. I honestly don't remember which one I picked. I think it's the borderless one I I feel like anyways he said that he would send that in a package which is very cool and very kind um this is gonna be I'm calling it like the multicolor of madness and my whole thing is just trying to be really really silly um I think I wasn't trying to do anything kind of like necessarily more ridiculous with this deck I think I was just trying to have a really fun time and playing a bunch of really cool multicolor stuff um so yeah, I don't know. This deck just seems it just it just seems super silly. I'm really excited about it. Um, it's playing everything but black. So the mana base is going to be really interesting for this. I have to figure out what to do and I have to figure out what cards I like, what lands I already have for this. But this is definitely something I'm going to do. I think once I have the commander in hands, I'll feel a little bit more inclined to like start getting pieces for it and all that sort of stuff. But priorities for the other things. Yeah. So, OK. I have three new commander projects to talk about. I feel so unhinged right now. I feel I'm very inspired these days. I feel very creative, like the creative juices are flowing and I just really want to build commander decks. I don't know. I think I need to also take some of that and build like some mock deck decks because I really love to film those for y'all. They're just super fun. And I have to start with this because I, I was originally like, should I say this for last? But it's on the... Um, the thumbnail and I, I, I just I have to explain myself so okay so if you're not sitting down you might want to take a seat because I'm building a mono red deck and any person who knows me knows that red and I not that we don't get along but it's the the color I find least represented in my commander decks and I constantly make a joke that I only know between like five to ten cards so that number fluctuates depending on what I'm what I'm 
who I'm talking to. So I'll be like, yeah, I only know eight red cards. And it was so funny because I was, I was playing the other day and I was playing Reen and a friend like points is like, Tracy, that's a red card. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm talking mono red cards. Like I don't know a lot of run mono red cards and I don't run a lot of mono red cards. Basically the kind of backstory behind this and kind of how this started was a couple of things. The first thing is I like to challenge myself. I like to build decks and I like to do slightly different things or things that I haven't necessarily done before while still keeping tried and true to like staples and things that I love in my commander decks. And I have always had a soft spot in my heart for Atali. OG Atali, new Atali is great too. The problem is, is I have two friends who already have Atali and I don't really feel like it would make as much sense for me to build it even though I love Atali. And I was thinking about it and as I was watching one of my friends have this, the card Carlac came up and I was like, oh my gosh, this would be so fun. And then I was like, what if I challenge myself to build a mono red deck and all my friends were like, you need to do this. So basically it's happening. It's also really perfect because Baldur's Gate 3, I love. And in this current playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3, Carlac is in our party and she is hilarious. She is so fun. I'd really recommend if you're playing Baldur's Gate 3, just throw her in your party. She's a great time. So this just seems, I don't have a lot of direction for this. I really do not. Like I have my current list of cards that I have on my magic wish list is probably about 15 cards right now that I know I want to throw in here, coupled with the lands. So I have about like half the the, the deck. So um, I'm going to be really needing some help here. Also, some mono red cards are really expensive. Um, that's a little fun fact that I learned. So anyways, don't have a lot of direction, don't really know what I'm going to do other than playing world big creatures, giving them haste and smacking people pretty hard. Beyond that, you tell me. There you go. It's going to be cool. I just, it's going to be fun. It's going to be super fun. Paul thinks that I should prioritize is absolutely like number one right now, but I have these other two projects, so I don't know. Okay. This came to be, this is another Baldur's Gate 3 tie. So my character in Baldur's Gate is named Elsa because I was like, I just want, I'm a spellcaster and I was like, I just want to Elsa and just cast ice powers. I do more than just cast ice powers, but I was thinking to myself, like, I wonder if there is a magic, like, ice themed commander. And then I was introduced into Hilda of the Icy Crown. And I was like, okay, so she's literally just an ice queen, Elsa. This is cool. And I was like, what if I build? an icy themed deck. I'm talking snowlands. I'm talking like freeze cards, ice, winter. Like that is the theme. And I feel like because a lot of, I feel like with tokens, like tokens started out as being like, I'm just going to build this like cheeky, like, like that's the thing about tokens is I'm running cards that like nobody is running in the world, like three blind mice. Like who is running this card? I am like, I'm running these, these cards, but they get out of hand really, really quickly. And I was like thinking about it. Like, I feel like sometimes I try to build a deck and I have like a level in mind that I want to do. And when I say level, I don't mean like a number. I'm more talking like, do I want to build this deck competitive? Do I want to build this deck to be silly? Whatever. Like Riku started out trying to be super silly. Now it is absolutely ridiculous. And it's one of the most powerful decks and I'm casting like a million cards a turn and drawing all these cards. Like this is theme though. Like Tox Real if I build that, that's probably going to be try hard. Carlac is going to be try hard. This is going to be vibes. I am here for the vibes. I feel like that is something that I often see sometimes missed in Commander is like the, well, I have to build anything super competitive. And I was just like, that's fine. I love that. I have those, but like, it's also super cool to just do something that's not as serious because I think I've kind of gotten to the point where like I've refined a lot of my stuff and I'm really happy with a lot of it is, and I don't feel like I have a lot on that lower power level anymore. And I feel like I just wanted to build something kind of silly. And so this is the results. So if you have any of the icy themed vibe cards, I already have a mass list for this. Like this deck is going to be probably like $50 because when I tell you that these cards are like ridiculously cheap and I get to run Snowlands, which is fun and I'm excited about this. It's just, it's going to be a good time. So I pretty much have this list pretty solid. Like on my wish list, I have like all the cards that I want to get. And um, I don't think I have a lot for this, but like all the cards that I want 
are like ridiculously cheap. Like there's there's nothing in there that is like very expensive at all. So that's really exciting. I think like the most expensive card on there is I want like a foil Sarah's blessing because the vibes are great. It's Rebecca Gway. Like I love it. And I want to foil one of those. But like that's like also because like, I want the foil and I, I'm maxed You know what I mean? Like the deck is going to be cheap, but it's going to be super silly and super fun. I think it's going to be a good time. I'm excited about it. So the last commander project. Okay. So basically um, I was on Facebook and Facebook does this thing, which I feel very conflicted about where it'll like post like groups that you might want to join. And I'm like, okay, but if I wanted to join them, I would already join them. You know what I mean? And I just don't have a desire to like do that. But this popped up on my recommended for this card. I don't remember what the conversation was about it, but as soon as I saw it, it was love at first sight. And I was like, I'm building that. Like zero questions, this was happening. And that is Quieza, Augur of Agonies. I, I think Paul was like, this is you in a magic card. And I, I think if if I were to pick, I, I think that I would say that this is safely it. It's perfect. It's Esper colored, come on. I love that. Um, whenever you draw a card, each opponent, uh, sorry, target opponent loses one and you gain one. I also want to do a little bit of life gain with this deck, which I don't really feel like I do in like any of my decks, really. I guess angels would be like the closest thing, um, but that's not, it's not like a lot of life gain. This is so cool. Um, I am going to, ha I feel like I have so many good staples for this. And then I already have all these card draw things or whatnot. Um, I do want to run like more creatures as well tune in this build. I don't really have a ton of direction. I haven't looked really at this yet, but the other thing that I was going to say is that this color scheme is the same thing as a Leela, but it's going to be totally different. And same thing for Hilda. It's the same color scheme as Grand Arbiter. I don't think that that matters though, because they're both, they're going to be very, very different decks. Like Hilda will be like some like little bit of bits of control or whatnot. And this will have a little bits of control too, but I love the Esper color combination. It'll be totally different from a Leela. Um, Alila's fairy tokens. This is going to be about drawing cards, of course, because that's me, but I don't, I want to make sure that I'm not getting lost in the instants and sorceries. I want to make sure that I am running more of those creatures because um that's just something that I want to do I don't really have a lot of direction yet I'm really excited to build this though and I think it's gonna be super fun oh my gosh guys like this is gonna be really cool I'm really excited about this so in terms of priority what am I doing next out of these that's a really great question I don't know and I think the reason why is because I haven't looked through what I have yet I haven't done trades for this I haven't looked in all that stuff and I think that's something that I am going to do because I do want to do trades um, with my friends and we don't do trades all the time. I think it's one of those things because I mean, if the collection hasn't really changed that much or anything like that, it might not necessarily be a benefit to like always looking through stuff. And also I'm looking for really specific things. And here I'm like, there's going to be this like one random ice uncommon that my friend might have in their binder that I'm going to be like, this is perfect for, you know, for this deck. So that's going to be the thing I will say budget wise. It's, it might be held up because it's going to be inexpensive and I know that it's going to be inexpensive. Um, and then Paul really thinks Carlock, but I feel like there's going to be really expensive Carlock cards and I don't own a lot of mono red cards. So I'm that, so I'm pretty sure the, the ice themed will, will take precedence. And then I think it's going to be probably a tie between Carlock and this. Um, I do think I got to sit down and like map out and figure out like what exactly cards I need and what I need to get and what I need to buy, especially for this Esper deck, because I don't know where the direction is or what I'm going and what cards are going to be good for this and what I need. So I got to do a little bit of organization and figure out what's going on. So anyways, guys, that is everything for this EDH update. So there's just so many exciting things. I love this. I'm really excited to hear what are some things that are upcoming for you guys that you're building. I'd love to hear about it in a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I'll catch you on my next one.